my passion for fish and fishing started, I don't know, when I could walk. It was a fishing family, you know, Dad and Pop, we fished all the time. I just loved fish from a really young age. My earliest memory of fishing would be Lawn Pier, catching a silver trevally with a crouch reel. Well, my first ever fish was a Macquarie perch. So I grew up with stories from my father and my grandfather about these, these Macquarie perch that used to be in all these rivers. You know, they were abundant. So we fished for Maccas as kids. Maccas, you know, Macquarie perch, obviously, Maccas. Um, and I've always had, the, uh, like, an extreme guilt that, you know, we didn't respect them. We, like, they were just a fish that you caught as a kid, and the old old pommy bloke, old Bert, taught me how to fish, and he was in his 80s, and he called them black brim. They're a bit of a forgotten fish in a way. And you think about, they know Murray Cod, they know golden perch or yellow belly, you know, they know all those type of things. And even silver perch. But there's Macquarie perch, and they're, they've, they've been gone out of the system for quite a while. And they're kind of a quiet, unassuming type of fish. So people haven't seen too many of them, and there's not a lot of connection with them. The story of Macquarie perch is that they were, yeah, really abundant freshwater fish species in our upland river systems and down to our middle reaches. So high country, Victoria, New South Wales, ACT. There's more and more evidence to say that they came down our river systems to lower reaches, like right down to Echuca. Anyone who works on Macquarie Perch can't help but like them. They're quite round, so they've got a tall body. They're not they're not fat sideways, they're, they're fat upways. They're not the prettiest fish, but they're certainly special in terms of our rivers. Yeah, you know, they were probably the most numerous large-bodied native fish that we had in, in our waterways. So they're very dark in colour, anywhere between dark grey to black. They've got more character, I think, than some of our other fish. The first thing you see is this white eye appear out of nowhere. They're, they're really, really different now. They almost look cartoonish. River puppy dogs, they're just gorgeous, very friendly and um, very approachable. The passion for perch is, is really, really strong. And it's to do what with their personality. You can bring them into the hatchery and a couple of days later they're feeding out of your hand. If there's changing water, they're looking at you. They're, you know, the superhero that used to be around everywhere and now you can't find them anymore. Over time, since about the 1950s, there's been a whole heap of different impacts on the species. And this has impacted um, all of our freshwater fish species. You know, our, our systems are heavily modified, changing our river systems for dams, barriers put in place for, for irrigation and water supply, obviously put big structures in place which stop fish moving around. And so that, that's known to have a big impact on Macquarie perch. There's been big habitat modifications, channelising our rivers and taking out the vegetation. There has been accounts of overfishing as well. You know, there's stories about people taking bags and bags of Macquarie perch out of big spawning aggregations. Uh, and there's been diseases as well. All of these things, things have contributed to the decline in the numbers of Macquarie perch um, across their former range. And so that's happened over the last 70 years or so with um, a handful of populations. But they're all really separated. They can't all connect like they used to. And the numbers, yeah, they're, they're not great. The last sort of stronghold population that we've got is Lake Dartmouth. And that's where they're going strong and the population's doing really well, but the, uh, you know, the outlook is, is not great with increasing propensity of bushfires, reduced flows happening over time. Yeah, we're really trying to look after that population that's left and use it to springboard and bring back 
other populations across their former range. People have put in effort in this space back to the 1960s um, with efforts to breed the fish, grow them up, the fingerlings and restock them back into the rivers. And that work has continued on for the last um, 60 years. The issue with them, the real crux, is that you have to go into the wild to get those fish and you have to get them on their spawning. Every good fish we take out of the natural population is a fish that's not going to spawn in the wild population, so we can't keep doing that. And unlike Murray Cod, where you could just put them in a pond and a couple of them there and they'll go and nest and spawn, they're fine. There's not with Macquarie, so we can't do it with them. So what we need to do is work on how to get the captive breeding, which is the fish that we have them in a pond, not out of the wild. And those fish are the ones that we can breed from. And that's the real crux of Macquarie Perch. That's the real nexus, if you like, of where we are with them. So the idea of the helicopter came from trying to minimise the time on the road. So if we look at our areas of, of risk with these fish, when you're dealing with a really sensitive animal during quite a sensitive time of year for them, we just wanted to minimise the time that they were in transit. The helicopter was a trial, we only put a handful of fish on there, but yeah, so far it's worked really, really well. So once the fish arrive, we acclimate them to our hatchery conditions for anywhere between one, two hours, and then we process them straight away. So it can be some late nights in the hatchery. We identify the males from females, inject the girls with um, hormone just to, um, and ensure that if they've got eggs, they're gonna release them when we need them. We let them sit for up to 38 hours, and then we'll check them to see if they're ready. We'll start stripping. It's not as exciting as it sounds. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll manually strip the eggs from the female. She's anaesthetised, so she's, you know, as numb as she can be while still kicking. So we like to be really, really gentle and cautious with these fish to ensure that they survive back to re-release. We manually inject the milk from the male. And that then fertilises the eggs and transfer them straight to incubators. There was obviously the initial fire, December, January, and then the floods happened in early February. I had multiple phone calls of people saying, you know, we've got native fish going belly up in the creek, we've got to do something now. So I got onto the phone to anyone that would listen to me and said we need help and we need help now on the ground. So the following day we went out with a water pod, so my brother-in-law and my two kids, um, trying to look for fish that were alive and we didn't find any live fish, which was fairly devastating. And my son, my eldest son said to me, Mum, this is one of the saddest things I've ever seen. They're really serious, yeah. The, the bushfire's happening outside the stream where the fish is, but those impacts happen over time and, and cause um, big declines. And we've seen it in other freshwater species and Macquarie perch after a bushfire. Um, we do see them, that we lose them in certain patches. We're at a low base, we've got increasing threats happening. If we don't act now, um, you know, there's a possibility if the next five or 10 years, Macquarie perch fade away and uh, yeah, essentially become extinct. So the final harvest for the Macquarie perch for the year from the fish we spawned the end of last year, was November, to be stocked into the waters tomorrow. This is the second pond, first pond we had over 90,000, so the return here looks really good as well, so yeah, it looks amazing. So the efforts now that are underway are really focused on improving those breeding efforts, producing more fish to stock back into our rivers, 
but also connecting that with other things that we know that make a difference, like habitat restoration, so snags going back into our systems, revegetating the river banks. Yeah, so we're heading up to the Kudra. Uh, pretty excited. It's uh, the last sort of step to the Maca perch. You know, we've harvested the pond, put in all the hard yards, and now we're getting to release them into the wild. And yeah, it's pretty exciting. Landcare Australia received a lot of funding after the Black Summer bushfires. It's all about bushfire recovery and looking after the water for the native fish population so they can recover from bushfire in the future. Well, I think up here, you know, we don't have a lot of entertainment and a hell of a lot of people fish. The best outcome in the future for the Upper Murray District would be that if these Macquarie perch establish a self-sustaining population, because they are an endangered species. So releasing Macquarie perch fingerlings back into the wild has to be the best part of my job. Um, when people ask me, what do you love about your job? That's 100% it. We wouldn't do it unless we loved what we were doing, but ultimately that, that cherry on the top, that, that end goal, seeing them swim off to the river, yeah, there's no feeling like it. What we'd like to do is be able to have our brewfish in the hatchery year round and condition them and get them to a stage where we can spawn them from hatchery captive stock and produce fingerlings without having to take wild fish out of those last populations. And so that work's been done for other native fish species like Murray cod, golden perch, um, or nearly all of our fish that we stock. And so we've cracked the code on those in you know the late 80s, and now we can produce those fish in vast numbers. What we'd really like to do is do that for Macquarie perch. They're the hardest fish. They just do things you can't understand. Like all the fish we do here, we do five or six different species here and they're all different. And then the Maccas are out there. They're so different. They do things that we don't know. They group up at times and they do these spawning runs and they spawn over riffles. They do lots of things that's really hard to emulate in a farm. It's going to take some pretty dedicated research and development to understand how to keep those fish in the hatchery year round. The combination of stocking the fish back into the systems, the habitat being restored, and yet yeah, in connecting it back with the community, really powerful, we think, in um, helping recover Macquarie perch. Now, looking at the flip side and seeing the recovery of that, it's phenomenal. It's really pulls your heartstrings. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty amazing. I guess one species, they're very charismatic. They're, um, they're the panda bear of uh, fish conservation, if you, if you like. And yeah, everyone loves them. You talk to guys that used to fish them and that was just an amazing experience and you see them running and there's a lot of passion from the community and the recreational anglers and it's hard to not pick up on that and channel it. You know, I've invested a lot of time, my own time and, and my career and all the rest of it in working with these things. You know, the idea that you can bring something back is, is pretty profound. Yeah, it really is.